Hey everybody, welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with a special guest running for California Congressional District number 34. He's a Green Party candidate. It's Kenneth Mejia. I pronounced that correct, right? Correct. Kenneth Mejia. Kenneth Mejia. Now, Kenneth, you uh, you look a little too young to know anything about anything. 26 years old. A lot of people are be like, what does a 26-year-old guy know about? Now, you went to college, I'm assuming, and everything. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I actually ran for this seat last year when I was 25. Get out of here. In the Democratic Party as a write-in and got 1,177 write-in votes in two months of campaigning. Wow, no kidding. Now what, wow. So, um, of course, I'm just kidding about you being young. You know, people <laughs> don't know that uh, Orson Welles was 25 when he did Citizen Kane. But one thing, I actually graduated college in two and a half years. No kidding. Yep, I received my bachelor's in science and accounting when I was 20 and received my certified public accounting license when I was 22. So oh. I've been working six years in... So now, numbers. are you just a driven guy like that, or were your were your parents uh, <laughs> just like really pushed you hard, or why? Well, where do you get that drive from? Well, I got that drive from my mother, a born and raised single mother, for an immigrant from the Philippines, and she took care of me and my three siblings, and she pushed us to to use education as a tool to to get wherever you need to be. Yeah, and, so and that's uh, what we did. And now you're trying to get uh, to be the. That's a, that would be great if you became. So now, why didn't you run as a Democrat? Why didn't? You, why are you running as a Green Party candidate? Right, so I ran last year in the Democratic Party, and then you did. I left after you know the whole debacle. What happened? I was a huge fan of Bernie Sanders, and campaigned for him as well last year. And then after I saw what happened to to him, what the DNC did to him, and how the party sort of neglected him and what and his supporters as well, I realized they're not the party for me. And then I also looked at what you know the criticisms of what the Democratic Party is fighting for is not the same as what the Green Party is fighting for. How so, how does it differ? Right. So, for example, one of the big things that the Democratic Party, like they should be fighting for a single payer. You know, last year they didn't even <laughs> include it as part of their Democratic Party platform or against fracking or they can, not you know, one big thing was in the past how they were against the Employee Free Choice Act. And so I gave them actually a chance because of Bernie Sanders. And so once but I, they, that, they keep saying that he's not a real Democrat. Anyway. Right. Exactly. You're like, no kidding, because he wants stuff that's actually good for people. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so you can tell he's not a Democrat. Why? Because yeah. he's for single payer. Right. And the biggest thing, they're not the Democrats are controlled by corporate interests and the Green Party's not. So a lot of people are actually it's a breathing ground because remember we saw the numbers 24 percent are democrats 28 are republicans and the rest is independents and a lot of people left the democratic party so it's a great time especially here in this district this is the only district that won for bernie sanders in la so uh what are, are there some of the specific issues that deal with uh, that you're dealing with that you want to highlight in your race for the 34th congressional district in california yeah, so I mean, uh, talking to the community in Los Angeles, one of the big things is immigration, for example. You know, it's a huge, uh, diverse uh, district. It's 60% Latino, 20% Asian, 10% Caucasian, and the rest, you know, African American and, and, and indigenous. So it's a very diverse group, and there's a lot of immigrant community, documented and undocumented. So what we want to do is push for it full legal status for all immigrants so that's a huge thing we want to do and is that uh, your opponent what is his what is his position on that well our opponents haven't taken a position on full legal status for oh, really? all immigrants like what we're doing is when people think about it like full legal status mm -hmm. for immigrants wow <laughs> like that's right. that's radical <laughs> so uh, that that's is pretty what, radical and that's one of the big issue and the next is like health care one out of every five people in our district don't have health insurance. Well, one of the big issues we're pushing for is a single payer system, Medicare for all, because one out of every five people in our district don't have health insurance. And that's one big thing that the Democrats are not pushing for, that we are as the, green, the Greens are. And a lot of people are receptive to it in the district. So that's a huge issue. So I know that uh, uh, Medicare certainly is more popular than uh, the Affordable Care Act, right? Or the Correct. ACA. Medicare is recently, I saw 58% approval and then the ACA is low 40s. So why do you think that the, the it is, the, so the Green Party's position is the single payer, correct? Correct, single payer. So why do you think the Democrats refuse single payer? I believe the Democrats refuse single payer because they have backings by the health insurance industry. Big oh. Pharma, people who basically wrote the ACA. And so you're saying that <laughs> money is keeping the Democrats away from giving their constituents a better health care system just because of money? Right. That's that's, it's, that's it's a big weird. charge it's, you're it's, making it's, there, it's, Kenneth. It's weird. So but you're, <laughs> wow. That's so. Uh, so and you. That's why we don't have single payer. Kenneth is saying. I've said it yeah. on this show before. He's saying because our government's corrupt. Exactly. We're the only industrialized nation on earth to not provide guaranteed health care. 
and it's because of the way our governments run, uh, that we, we run our campaigns, which is corrupt, and uh, nobody seems, like the Democrats don't seem to even have a platform or a vision to do that. Like, it's not even part of their, is it part of your, the Greens Party to get money out of politics? And, oh, yeah. Like, they won't even stop taking corporate <laughs> money for the DNC. Did you see that? They voted for the DNC to keep taking corporate lobbyist money, and it's like, well, that's the whole goddamn problem. That's why Hillary Clinton, it's like they seem to learn nothing, right. but you say you've learned from that? Exactly, and that's why I left. It's hard to be a progressive in the Democratic Party. Democrats would rather fight progressives than beat Republicans. So, Well, I've said that on this show. Uh, Shama Sawant was the first one to say it to me, and I, di- I didn't... B- I thought she was uh, kind of being a little exaggerated at the time, but she said that the Democratic Party would rather lose to a Republican than win with a progressive, and uh, that and that the first order of business of the DNC wasn't to make sure they could defeat the Republicans, but to make sure they defeated the agenda of the working class, which was to defeat Bernie Sanders, right? And so that's really what they're all about. Now, you... Uh, you see through that, and you say you're... Now, how are you for the working man? Are you for... what? What would you be for? I mean, if you look at what the Green Party and what we're fighting for is, number one, single payer, like health care. Like, okay. The, the working class needs health insurance. Right now, they're not getting it. Yeah, but then number we got to pay more in taxes, <laughs> right? What, what is, it, would, it, would we well, have... We could actually fund it through uh, the Federal Reserve, through modern monetary theory is, is, is another big thing we could do. And then also oh. taxing the 1% as well. So in terms of helping the working class, what we want to do is, uh, what I'm play- pushing for in my platform is guaranteed... Um, basic income, twelve thousand dollars a year. Oh, you guys are so rad. See, that's the <laughs> problem. You guys get yeah. so crazy. That scares the hell out of everyone right? listening exactly. when you say stuff like they're like, "Well, they're crazy." Yeah. Another big thing: thirty-hour work weeks. You know, there are like eight countries in Europe who who work less than thirty hours. You know how, on average, how much uh, Germany works? Germany work works week? less than twenty-five. Twenty-five hours a week. Yeah, on average. And they provide health care as a right. They provide education as a right. How else can we provide the, the working class? Health uh, education as a right. Like, that's another big thing. And canceling student debt. Student so how debt, could they yeah. do that? How, do, how does Germany, people work half as much as they do in America, basically? Is that what you're saying? Right. Those, those other countries, exactly, those industrialized nations, they work lesser hours. Wow. So why, when you say something like a guaranteed... Basic income. That sounds like the... You know, like a like a communist society to people. That's scary. That's exactly what everyone, they would go, who's going to pay for that? So who's right. going to pay for that? Right. So the way it, the way it works, a lot of people don't know how our, our economic system works. Right. We are- They know mo- how it feels. Right. We're a, we're a monetary sovereign country. Right. We print our own money. Exactly. Which um, is why we don't have the same problems, Greece exactly. or, any of the, or any of the European Union. Right. Exactly. And we propped up $16 trillion to help Wall Street. And no one even knows that. I, I, no, people who no, watch this show know that exactly, and then so if we could prop that up, then we could prop up one point three trillion to help student debt. I agree. We could prop up uh, trillions, like billions of dollars, to help provide a guaranteed basic no. income because because basically, and then you also have you know the development of technology and whatnot, and you know. So when people say mm-hmm. rope, first of all, you're wrong because uh, I watched John Oliver and he said you can't do that. Anyway, <laughs> and if anybody, well, me and John Oliver, we have. A, if anybody uh-huh. knows about uh, how quantitative easing works, it's a guy who works for, anyway, one of the six major media corporations. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that just drove me nuts. I don't know if you saw when he was doing that crap about... Uh, Jill Stein? Yeah, Jill Stein. And right, you better know how quantitative he's... No, no, no. You know, John F. Kennedy didn't know how to b- build a rocket, but he knew we were going to go to the moon. Okay? So that's where... <laughs> right. But that's how that's how our federal spending comes from, you know, deficit spending. So. Yes. Federal, right. People are... St- I, people, there's a lot of people are starting to figure out that it's, you know, every... You know, people go, oh, free markets. Well, there's no such thing. Markets are invented by people who have the most money money to protect themselves that's what's called a free market right right so like when the tpp happens that's like they're all oh, free trade it's not free trade if it was free trade why is it twenty thousand pages long right that's not free trade that seems like trade built and designed to protect the wealthiest people in the world and patent holders at the expense of everyone else all right we're getting off track a little right but no but that's how we, we definitely want to help the working class especially now that the top one percent owns as much as the bottom 90. and so, it's just going to keep going that way and that way and especially as technology develops people's jobs are going to be lost and so we got to pr- prepare for that and so, so, even obama has sort of hinted at that too so the problem mm-hmm. with robots is that they don't uh they don't buy stuff 
and that's how you get an economy going, right? So if you to replace everybody in fast food uh, or any or anywhere else in any other industry, when you replace them with with robots, the problem is, and that was taught that by uh, oh, I'm going to blank on his name, an economist who was on this show. I'll think of it in a second. The Scottish, and uh, but he said the problem is that robots don't buy stuff. And so that's why FDR had such a successful recovery program because he practiced demand economics, which means you give people a job and you put money in their pocket. They spend money. That creates right. demand in the economy, whereas what we've been living under uh, is this uh, Ronald Reagan supply side economic, which right. is you give more money to the people who already have the most, and, and then down. it will trickle down. And you'll right. say, sir, please, sir, another trickle, another trickle right. of your wealth. So, oh, thank you. I've got to drop. So that's what they're practicing, but we need to practice the other thing, and that's what you would be for? Oh, yeah, definitely. And then one of the biggest things is a guaranteed job program. So that's I, I'm for a guaranteed job mm. program. Yes. Why? So again, you would think the Democrats would be screaming this at the top of their yeah. line. I mean, this is what FDR did, but people forget the Democrats unwound the New Deal in the 90s. I don't know how much. <laughs> I was born in 1990. Yeah, so they unwound it. Bill Clinton unwound the New Deal. You never hear them mention the New Deal. They never, FDR, they never mention FDR. They talk about, they, they quote Reagan, but they'll never quote FDR. I don't know what it is wrong with the Democrats. Yeah. So let's get, so... You have a good chance of winning this seat? Yeah, a pretty good chance. I and mean, based on these polls that our, our, what are the polls our candidates say? are using, like they're, they're, they're the ones putting up these polls, right? Yeah, so they're so doing their like, own internal polling? Right, so we're like top six. And, oh, really? And then when you take out partisanship bias, because it's you know, a huge Democrat, yes. we're like fourth place out of really? 23 people. So we need to be top two to advance. Oh, okay. So, oh, so they do. Okay, that's right. Unless someone gets over 50.01%. Right. Or, yeah, 51. Right, okay. So... Oh, well, that's so, uh, you need to get in the top two, and then the top two fight it out. Unless one of those top two already has 50% of the vote, then and there's they, no... They win the whole thing. So there's no runoff or whatever, right? Correct. Okay, wow. So what do you... Uh, well, I, I would love to see a progressive, you know, anywhere in government. I think it's exciting. And, uh, you know, the youth, uh, I think that you represent your vision, I think, speaks for more people. Right, right then certainly anybody in the democrat and then the thing you want to mention is what we just mentioned previously is like this is happening across you know all over the world in different countries yeah so. yeah I mean like people are waking up to this neoliberalism that has ruined the world <laughs> I mean, people are opening up to you know more uh just, you know the thing that our vision our platform what we're pushing for are things that are being you know implemented already in different countries or being tested so like what you know like for example um 30 hour work weeks are being in Europe. I mean, you that know, is Sweden, such radical Germany. stuff to radical, say. Radical, right? But healthcare. Like, right. that's still radical to it's people. It's still radical here. to people. You're Education. right. Education. Still you radical. Know? Yeah. Guaranteed. But I'm all for that 30 hour. I'm all for yeah. all that stuff. They're trying the uh, basic income now in Scotland. And yeah. So, like, oh, really? They're yeah, doing that they're in Scotland? Doing, they're trying it in Oakland as well. So, I mean, we, ha we have to try it. So. Wow. So these are some radical ideas, but I, you know, uh, yeah. I think it's time people, you know, I tell people, what do you call a system that takes the richest country in the world, which is the United States and renders half of its population poor? You call that a failed system. Right. Right. So, and that's what was wrong with the Democrats just wanted to around the edges, incrementalism. And Bernie would say, hey, you sound like you want a revolution. And the whole, that's how he started every speech. It sounds like you guys are ready for a revolution. Yeah. People are ready for, we know the system is messed up. And I think we can, you know, we need real radical ideas, which aren't really radical, by no, the way. Not. You know, they're already, like you said, they're already doing it 30 hour work weeks, single payer health care. Uh, commitment to education, basic, and, yeah, basic, you know, and, yeah. So these out. are these aren't really that radical. They're only radical because uh, you don't hear these ideas in mainstream news media because right. part of rolling back the New Deal was to consolidate the media, which is what Bill Clinton did. We used to have fifty giant uh, and um, communication companies, and now we have six. So part of that is then then the they they just narrow the debate and you never hear stuff like that. You never hear about guaranteed income, right? Or and then if they and anything like that gets brought up, like by Bernie, people are like, "Ooh, that's a crazy, crazy." Yep. So all right. So what is uh, what is your big pitch to the people? Where should they go? Where's your website? And uh, what, how can people help out? Right. So hello everyone. Can't me. I'm 26 years old. I'm running here representing the Green Party. And so if you want to help us and help bring power back to the people and you're sick of both Democrats and Republicans, come check us out. Help us out. Visit MejiaForCongress.com, M-E-J-I-A. You could volunteer. You could sign up to donate. And 
some of the biggest accomplishments that we have is that we're the only candidate to collect all 322 signatures to be on the ballot, while a majority of other candidates paid $1,740. So that just shows how much no we're kidding. out there out there in the community. So you can either get the signatures or pay a fee, right. and they decided to pay the fee and instead they give of getting you, the They give you three and a half days to do that, and we're the only campaign to collect all 322 signatures. So... I'm not paying two thousand, close to two thousand yeah. dollars to be on the ballot. So that's how much we're in it. We have close to five hundred volunteers. We no. So yeah. Let me ask you two quick questions, and then we'll have to let you go. What the Green New Deal? Tell me about that. Yeah. Are you for it? And what does it mean? I mean, basically, the Green New Deal is pushing for twenty million new jobs to push towards one hundred percent clean renewable energy by twenty thirty. Whether that be getting our energy sources from the sun, from water, from the wind, and so that sort of. Uh, you know, when you hear Jill Stein, she says we need to have a warlike mobilization because, right. you know, climate change and even locally issues in L.A., you know, pollution is we have close to 3000 people die each year in L.A. And it's it's sad, but we need to sort of start moving towards that path towards uh, clean, renewable energy. Well, people, so. we don't do big things anymore in America except militarily. <laughs> right. Like we need like, you know, you talked about uh, when Joe, Jill Stein says we need to have like a warlike mobilization. mobilization. Well, that's how we got the Internet. Interstate uh, road system, right? Highway system was because they sold it to us as a defense. We have to have this for defense so we can move our missiles around. Right. And so now, but it really was a big boon to our economy. Now people can travel and we can ship goods a lot more efficiently and right. quicker. And so that's what, you know, yeah. uh, everything gets sold. If you sell, sell it as a war thing, it'll get that. Yeah. Maybe you should sell windmills as a war thing. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like it, like they said, it helps the working class. It creates jobs. Yes. And so. Yeah. Now, has the Green mm -hmm. Party nationally, have they helped you at all in your uh, campaign? Yeah, I mean, we've been endorsed, and Jill Stein is helping us as well. So we actually have a lot of Greens nationwide who are communicating on behalf through emails, through social media. And we're also going to be speaking next weekend at the California Green Party State Convention. So, oh, that's t that's next week? On Saturday in Bakersfield. So oh, we'll be there, and, boy. and we have our campaign rally on Sunday, and Jill Stein is going to be there. She's going to uh, introduce me. Well, she's going to give her speech and then introduce me. Oh, no kidding. She's going to be here in, a, in L.A. So Wh When is that? It's going to be... Sunday, March 12th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And it's on MejiaForCongress.com, and you can just check the calendar. Okay. And Jimmy Dore is invited. All right. Come uh, maybe we'll come or... down and get, get our new mobile uh, <laughs> camera. We'll take it down there. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on. I'm uh, glad you had a chance to talk to the audience. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. All right. Best of luck. I love progressives. Hey, the next live Jimmy Dore show is March 4th. That's a Saturday. Get your tickets right below. The next one after that is March 20th. The shows sell out really fast, so get your tickets right now. Link's right there.